Ruth Holmes met Dr. Jack Kevorkian when she joined his legal team in the 90s as a jury consultant. He had written down all the words in the dictionary he did not know. So he thought that the court was boring, and so he would sit there studying words, and then when we were in the cafeteria, he would be quizzing us on words and hope we would memorize it by the next time. Dr. Jack would play flute with her daughter, and then the family took him in when he went into hiding from all the publicity. He liked turkey, beets, and baked potatoes, and he was handy. What I really appreciated was when he was living with us, everything was broken, like light switches and lanterns and things like that. He fixed it. It might have been broken for years, but Jack could fix anything. Here's a picture of the family watching the 60 Minutes broadcast. That would be his downfall. Here's a recent photo catching up with Mike Wallace, who conducted the interview. Kevorkian would stay with the Holmes family for six months until he went to prison, and then for four months when he was released. In the eight years in between, Ruth spoke to him daily. His advice to everyone, if you ever met him and talked to him on a personal level, was not to be afraid. Do not be afraid. And so he was not afraid. Friends say Dr. Jack was much more than his Dr. Death nickname. He was a musician, a writer, an inventor, and an artist. This was his last painting. Holmes says he was ahead of his time and says his legacy in the medical field is improved hospice care and the changing laws governing right to die. I think that uh, Jack will go down in history, certainly in medical, medical history, and he will have made a difference because he stood up for every person's right to choose. In Birmingham, Michael Rosenfield, Channel 7 Action News. Uh